Throughout the history of the world, the struggle between the workers and the upper class has always been present. This struggle has culminated in a multitude of different ideas and events. The idea of better working rights and conditions along with better pay has been a product of that struggle. Of course, the struggle itself continues to this day with things like better wages. A clear example of that struggle would be the Colorado coal miner strikes of 1913 to 1914. In 1913, Ludlow miners became frustrated with their poor working conditions and low pay. They went on strike that fall. The strike went on for months until tensions reached an all-time high and the National Guard decided to open fire. Although this is a tragedy, it is a triumph for the overall cause. To go into more detail about what the strike was and how it happened, the strike began in September 1913. The strike was organized by the United Mine Workers of America. Around 10,000 miners, including their families, went on strike. The miners were striking against the Colorado Fuel and Iron Company, which was owned by Rockefeller. Rockefeller was an oil industrialist and was one of the most richest people ever to have lived. The strikers had to make tent colonies, with the biggest one being at Ludlow. The point of the strike was for better wages, better conditions, and better work hours, along with union recognition. Eventually, the company hired detectives to come in to investigate and intimidate. The striking miners began to arm themselves for, for protection within the tent colony. Tensions continued to rise and the National Guard was eventually called in by the state, Colorado State Governor to keep the situation under control. The National Guard also escorted strike-breaking miners. The strike con continues on for months reaching well into spring the next year. On April 20th, 1914, the National Guard opened fire on the tent colony. Why they opened fire is not very clear. The violence lasted through the day and the National Guard de started to light the tents on fire. At this point, much of the residents had already left. Eleven children two women suffocated while hiding underneath the tent. About 25 people died in that massacre. Other miners in southern Colorado went on their own massacre as a response to the events at Ludlow. The violence continued until President Wilson at the U.S. Army established peace in southern Colorado. The strike ended on December 1914. Overall, this is a clear-cut example of triumph and tragedy within history. While the event is known for being a massacre, it is also a triumph. Why is it a triumph? Because it brought attention to the miners. The world turned its head to southern Colorado to see what was going on. Yes, the miners didn't truly achieve their initial demands, but the miners did achieve its goals of having recognition. The whole event put Rockefeller in a hot seat. The miners' union also gained more members, but the whole event will still eternally be remembered as primarily a tragedy. 25 people still perished that day, many of them women and children, immigrants whose pain and sacrifice cannot be changed and cannot be forgotten. After the massacre, the rest of the country continue to have its eyes on Ludlow and the miners. Rockef Rockefeller introduced his own unions and he went on to fix his own public image. Rockefeller denied the event as a massacre. There was no Ludlow massacre. The engagement started as a desperate fight for life by two small squads of militia against the entire tent colony. In conclusion, the Ludlow massacre is a very important event that is often overlooked in history. Its legacy will always be known as the bloodiest labor dispute in American history. It is still important to this day as the massacre was instrumental to the future decision making of granting rights and liberties to laborers. In fact, the massacre should be used as a clear example of how labor disputes and strikes should not be handled by the employer. 
it is a clear evidence of the suffering and the pain that workers go through to solidify their own rights.